Hey, what's up guys? So today we are gonna be having a Yu-Gi-Oh! discussion video on the topic of is this a low IQ play? Because it is a discussion video. And I want you guys to go ahead and participate in the comment section below and answer the following question here. So my question is a simple yes or no, so don't change it by the way. I want you to answer at the start of this video and I will kind of reveal as time goes on kind of the ins and outs of this. But the question is, is running Upstart Goblin in a 41 plus deck, meaning you're running over 40 cards, a bad idea, yes or no, meaning that you will be actually playing with more than 40 cards, and you will also be running Upstart Goblin. Um, is it a bad idea giving your opponent essentially an extra thousand life points in exchange that you can deck thin, if you will? But if you think about it, if you're playing a deck that is over 40 cards, then why wouldn't you just take out Upstart Goblin? You're just giving your opponent a thousand life points. So again, I want you guys to go ahead and answer the question uh, again down below. And don't change it. I don't want to see any of those edited comments over there. But is it a low IQ play? Because I've seen this question kind of asked several times. And in fact, in some of my older videos, I have actually kind of briefly discussed this. But there's a lot more things that came into Yu-Gi-Oh! as time went on uh, with the iteration of other newer cards and interactions and stuff like this. There's a really long post over here on the organization. I'll kind of sum it up here, but I'll link it down below if any of you guys want the full read. But let's go ahead and first off address the question here. Now, it actually depends on the deck that you are playing. It can actually be a good and bad uh, option to go ahead and play Upstar with a deck that is over 40 cards. And let me go ahead and hop right into it. So obviously, we all know the effect of Upstar Goblin. You draw a card, your opponent gains a thousand life points. It was used to essentially deck then and run a deck that had less than the required amount. So you would have essentially more consistency in your deck. Now, there are other decks that, uh, you know, a thousand life points doesn't really matter. So there's no real downside to it as your win condition doesn't revolve around life points. An example of this would be, let's say, Exodia or the Destiny board. But for the most part, um, those aren't really that meta in the game, so I won't really touch upon that too much, but I will go ahead and first off say if you're playing an Exodia deck, the life point difference doesn't really make too much of a difference because that is not essentially your win condition. Um, in fact, giving your opponent life points sometimes with things like Hope for Escape, where like the life points difference, that can actually help you out as well. So there is uh, more benefit with the life point gain, but for the most part, no one's really playing like Reverse Burn here in, in 2020. Although that would be another uh, Dex archetype where technically life points do matter, but you're Reverse Burning, so it's basically you're dealing a thousand damage for free. So there are again decks that would be uh, kind of uh, avoiding this, but those decks can still benefit off of Upstar Goblin even without that effect of that life point gain, and we'll kind of get into that. Um, there's also other archetypes that would make great use out of having extra spell cards, uh, Sky Strikers, for example, or even the Magical Musketeers, as you know, you can go ahead and just activate one. Yes, your opponent will be gaining a thousand life points, and Magical Musketeers aren't going to be, let's say, using Exodia as a win condition. The fact is that you're able to still activate a card and then go plus with that effect. It's still worth it, as some decks don't actually pull off uh, OTKs very frequently. It's not, I'm not saying it's impossible, in let's say a Magical Musketeer deck to OTK, but what I'm saying is that like you're not going to consistently be like, okay, game on board. Like for example, one excellent example for uh, Upstart that would not be in most scenarios is there's a very specific um, combo in certain decks, for example, Mermails, where you basically just have the Atlantean Prince, and as long as you can search out that Megalo, any water, you'll have enough damage to put up that amount of damage to deal en enough damage. But if you activate Upstart, because you gave your opponent that extra thousand life points, that does not work. In that case, it wouldn't be good. But let's go ahead and dig a little bit deeper into this because there's a lot to actually talk about and I thought this was really interesting. So um, another uh, thing that you have to keep in mind too is you might not draw into your hand traps, right? It, let's say we are going second uh, with a duel. Not getting that extra card could be actually huge. I mean, if you are playing against Ad Emancipator or any combo heavy deck that can throw up these like unbreakable boards, so to speak, if you don't have that hand trap or like an excellent example would be like Nibiru, if you upstart into Nibiru, and you went second and your opponent made a board, I don't think that Nibiru is going to be seeing too much play as they've already established, you know, the 50 special summons in that one particular turn. So in that case, yeah, Upstart Goblin would not be as great. And it all depends if you're going first or second. And obviously you can side deck in and out Upstart Goblin for certain reasons. You're going into time, whatever the case may be, your opponent is playing some type of weird deck. 
but that is something to also take into consideration. So hopefully this gave you some idea, but let's go ahead and dig even deeper over here. So there's a little thing that he shows off, um, and again, I'll post this uh, down below, which is by someone named uh, Tinker. He goes by. Anyways, the uh, one engine requirement with eight hand traps. So uh, basically drawing upstart, with, if the deck size is 41, keep in mind this number would change if, obviously if you're playing more than 40. So if you're drawing a hand trap in opening hand, your chance goes down by a very small percent. It's just a little above 1%. But the thing is, we still have to take that into consideration because it still is a factor here. And you might be thinking it's just such a low percent, but the thing is with Yu-Gi-Oh, again, any chance in a game over a long course of time. Remember, you're not just playing one, unless you're just playing, you know, just one game instead of a full match. If you're going three duels, that that's like 3%, uh, and that could be actually a uh, interesting factor. But we also have to look at that if you're running a 41 card deck plus upstart, if you have anything that can basically start deck thinning before you activate that upstart, that can be huge. And let me go ahead and actually jump right into this. So let's go ahead and open up uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro and I'll give you an example of, let's say, Upstart over here and let's say a deck like Dinosaurs. So a very calm, uh, very simple like opener used to go ahead and let's say go for Oviraptor. You would then go ahead and search out another card over here, uh, depending on whatever the case may be. Maybe it's Conductor Tyran or whatever the case may be, or you can go ahead and search out any card. So basically, this is adding another card. I'm just going to put this because it's just searching out another. Technically, it's a six or lower, but I'm just using this as a reference to something that could also deck things. So you can start off with Fossil Dig, then go into Obiraptor, then Obiraptor can go ahead and search out, let's say like Miscellaneousaurus. Miscellaneousaurus can then banish itself, and then we can go into the Argosaurus, and then we can go ahead and pop that Baby Sarasaurus or Petit over here, then we'll get an additional, uh, another card over here, and then with the effect of the Argo, because it did pop something, we're able to go ahead and have that effect to go for the Evo Pill. The Evo Pill will then go ahead and banish some of the cards maybe that we put into the graveyard, and then we're gonna go ahead and bring out a Coatlas or Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. So we effectively went through, just with this one card, went through that total of eight cards just with something that opened up. And then after all of that happens, we deck them or whatever, then we go ahead and activate Upstart, our chances to draw another card that can maybe disrupt our opponent that wouldn't be part of the dinosaur engine over here, let's say like Ash Blossom or Valor or anything else, really. What it comes down to is you are deck thinning even harder after you've already deck thinned, or you can activate Foolish, whatever the case may be. There's a lot more that goes into it, and at that point, it's not just deck thinning by one, you've essentially made it so you've gotten not necessarily rid of certain cards, but more so you don't happen to have a chance to go into like drawing them with the upstart because your chances of drawing the other cards that uh, again are maybe not searchable with the archetype or would just be you know let's say at one so the chances of drawing them would essentially be higher because you have eliminated a lot of the other potentials of drawing so there's a little bit more that goes into it. all right let's go ahead and go back to the post over here so that is one way where again you'd be able to deck then even harder with this and then there's also this little visual representation of uh this uh, over here. So again, it depends on the deck that you are playing, but then we can also take it a step further and relate it to what we're actually going to be seeing in the metagame with Dragoon. We're all playing the, the vanilla, right? You, you don't want to draw Dark Magician, you don't want to draw the Red Eyes, and you don't want to obviously draw the Fusion because you want to go ahead and use the Predator Plant to go into that. The more cards you play, the less chance that you have to go ahead and draw those cards tactically also. Consider that as well. That would be another, he mentions uh, Gemini Garnet, but like it's just the same type of concept. Uh, and uh, to really sum up what he posted over here and again i'll link the full read because it is kind of lengthy and i kind of wanted to sum it up um if if you play zero cards that thin out the deck and require uh, 40 or more cards or if you're playing a combo deck that needs to specifically deal 8,000 damage there are ftk decks that would actually be decks that they, they can't play upstart because that like there's an exact cutoff at the amount of damage that they can play sometimes it's, it's like 8,200 or something and they just they can't right um, but if, um, one thing is you can't play spells, uh, for format or deck reasons, like, uh, what is it, the Sekas, that, that would be an, uh, an excellent example, I think, yeah, he mentions this over here, uh, where you're just not allowed to play it, or, like, he mentions an Achiria Beast, if that becomes very meta, we also have Tribe Brigades coming into the game, and there might be a lot of different ways for that deck to make an Achiria Beast, and, of course, there's different decks that can make it, any, like, variant of the Marface, they can throw that card out pretty consistently as well, but, um, any deck that would turn one Achiria Beast, yeah, if you're going second, then Upstar is completely pointless against those decks. But how often does the Tria Beast uh, be made 
uh, that would be also have to be factored in. Um, again, he mentions the FTK uh, oriented deck, or if you're late in the match and you're considered about life points, I would say this is not like the most relevant thing for most people. Or if your deck uh, cannot uh, draw into other cards, some archetypes they'll have some type of an effect that like it, it does this and then you get to draw. Or if there's some type of thing like extravagance would be an example of a card that stops you from using Upstart Goblin. Therefore, obviously, then you can't play Upstart Goblin if things prevent your deck from playing it. So to really, I guess, answer the question at the end of the day here um, is that there are different times where Upstar Goblin would be bad and actually would be good. But um, overall, the whole argument for most of this in the article, if you read it, is basically supporting that it is totally fine to play Upstart with uh, most decks, but again, there are certain exceptions, but even going further on to that, you could make the argument that with the upstart, if you are going second, you lose the ability to draw into your hand traps, and literally, again, it goes to the same point, drawing certain hand traps after your, your opponent went first, it, they're completely pointless. Uh, a lot of times, Nibiru, after the turn one play of your opponent special summoning enough cards to put up that board, you would rather probably have drawn that extra, you know, again, if if, the, if you upstart not Nibiru, you're probably going to be like, I shouldn't have even played it. But again, that's just the luck. And the amount of percentage uh, that does change over here is very minimal, but it does matter. So I do have to mention it. But anyways, I'm curious to know what you guys think of this now, because again, a lot of people when I was... Again, I, this this was in some of my Magical Musketeers video. This one, Magical Musketeers, it's not a deck that OTKs or FTKs, so generally it's seen as like, that's totally fine, but there are certain people that still will play Upstart Goblin in a deck that has over a certain amount, and with that Dinosaur example, that's a really good one where you can kind of understand that. Like, you go through all these cards, and then you have, and again, going back to the Dinosaurs, we went through like seven or eight cards, and then on top of that, remember we start with five cards, and that's like 12 cards already, and that's just a simple combo. And then you can take it a step further and then maybe go ahead and even deck them harder. But anyways, that's the story, guys. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this type of a discussion video. I thought it was a really interesting subject matter because um, I don't think it's... Uh uh, a, a low IQ play to play Upstar Goblin at the end of the day to kind of answer guys' question. But I could understand some of the players that would be like, why the heck would you run it? Just not run Upstar Goblin in the deck and you will have that extra card anyways. But they don't understand that there are multiple set processes that would make this more viable. But there's also ways where, again, it's not good, which I already mentioned below. Anyways, feel like I'm ranting now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like on it. And if you are new here, subscribe and turn on that bell so you don't miss out on more Yu-Gi-Oh! discussions like this in the future. And if there's other uh, good Yu-Gi-Oh! topics, I'm curious to know um, if you guys want to go and comment down below uh, things that you would like to have discussed. But anyways, thanks for tuning in, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video. Have a good one, and I'm out. Peace.